So, does that make sense? So you're here for a reason, because it's bigger than just the food thing. But if I could, I could have three, three helpers. Could I have three helpers? All three of you? Wow! Do you guys, did two of you have phones? Can you do that? Can you get your phones out? Can you, can you move down like two seats so I just don't like the camera? Um, okay, so here's what I need. Can you set your timer for 10 minutes? Okay? And can you set your timer for 20 minutes? Right? And... Bo you know, we'll do both. If both of you guys say, when your timer goes off, just say, who cares? Is that fair? Just do that. And, and what's your name? Yeah, start them now. What's your name? Okay, can you do me a huge favor? Are you fast? You fast? Kind of? No? Okay, that's good, because I don't want to run fast anyways. If I start, this is very emotional for me, because I'm going to go into a lot of stuff that happened to me. So if you could be so kind, if I start crying, could you just stand up and smack me in the face? So knock that cry right out of me. Can we do that? Perfect. Okay. You guys know the difference between broccoli and boogers? Yeah, kids won't eat broccoli. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> That's the only plant joke I know. I'm sorry. Okay. So I'm going to tell you guys my story for a little bit, for about 10 minutes, okay? I'm going to tell you my story for about 10 minutes. Um... So, some of you know this, some of you don't. You know, I've been in the newspaper, I've been on TV, um, I've been on live radio, I've been in a couple magazines. It's pretty crazy. But the truth is, the transformation that took place in my life, if I didn't think it was repeatable, I would be wasting my time. I would not even be talking to you guys. What happened to me over the course of a few years is out there for anyone. There's no magic pill. There's no money to pay. I'm just a normal dude. In fact, really, I'm just a fat guy that ate some apples. That's literally all I am. And if I didn't believe that, I would not be sharing my story because my stories be useless to people. So I'm going to like skip kind of for now. I'm going to skip the first part of my life. And I'm going to go right into age 38, because by age 38 is kind of where my transition started. At 38 years old, um, I weighed over 400 pounds. We don't really know how much because they couldn't weigh me. The scales didn't weigh that much. I was super sick, and my life sucked. Um, this is what I looked like. I was a mess. See how happy I wasn't? You know what I mean? Um, Everything at 400 pounds is harder. If you think about your weight and add whatever you have to, to weigh 400 pounds and come up the stairs, get in and out of your car, bend over and tie your shoes. I mean, that's a workout. I don't know how many people can do that. That's hard. That's the stuff, the physical stuff you see, but what you don't see is the emotional stuff. My wife and I got married at a very young age. We were 19 and 20. We were high school sweethearts. I was supposed to be her protector, her provider. You know, I was supposed to take care of her. And here I was at 400 pounds, sitting in a chair, sitting on the couch, watching Netflix while she's out mowing the lawn. So yeah, there's physical stuff, but there's also that stuff that I'm not doing my job. I couldn't play basketball with my kids. I couldn't run around outside with my kids. You know, if my kids were going to run out in the street, I don't know if I could catch them to save them. So there's that kind of thing, too. Um, so things were pretty bad for me. Um, also, I was diagnosed with a, with a joint disease where my joints dislocate a lot. So if you ever twisted your ankle, that's what kind of happens to me all the time. And they started realizing it's not just me being clumsy. I had some serious stuff going on. So um, I was on a lot of anti-inflammatories and I was on a lot of pain medicine as well. Since I was 20 years old, they put me on pain medicine, and as I build up a tolerance, they will get more and more and more. What I ended up with, even working here, on the way here, I would stop at Burger King and I would get two breakfast sandwiches and a Diet Coke, because I didn't want to gain weight. It's true. Um, I started eating all this crappy food, and my whole life was food and couch. That's all I did. I would do as little as I possibly could to get into work, and as soon as I got home, I would hit the couch and just stuff my face. 
We ate out. We, took, we did take out probably four nights a week, pizza and wings. Um, I ate fast food at least, no less than two times a day I would have fast food. Um, it just became part of my life. And all these poor food choices and moving less and less, it added up to me being that 400 pound sick cripple guy. And this is what my life looked like. Prescriptions, 20 something of them. You know, 20 some prescriptions. I had one of those little bottles with the days of the week, it was terrible. Um, Braces, immobilizers, canes, all this stuff. They casted my legs and sent them away to uh, California so I could get new leg braces because my, my joints would not hold my body up. Um, I was frustrated. I was frustrated. Life was bad. This is what my life looked like. I mean, I had my fancy cane for out, you know, going out, and then I had my outside cane. You know, those two hung by the door, and they helped me around. And most of the time I was in some kind of... Um, a mobilizer or air cast or something. There was always something wrong with me. But a few years ago, um, my wife's mom got sick. And since we were high school sweethearts, we spent a lot of time at each other's house. And we were very close to her mom, both of us. But that was my wife's best friend in the whole world. She got sick and she just wasn't getting better. We thought she had the flu, a cold. And after a week, so like this is more than the flu. So long story short, um, she found, we all found ourselves at Roswell and she was diagnosed with leukemia. And we started entering a world that we knew nothing about. Our life started becoming, instead of, you know, get the kids to practice and stuff, it was hanging out at Roswell, work Roswell. While we're dealing with that, we got a phone call that my father was diagnosed with kidney cancer. Uh, they gave him six months to live at the diagnosis. So here we are, you know, just trying to get through life, and all of a sudden we have two terminally ill parents. Um, and I don't want to get into all the details, but uh, one, of the, one of the catalysts for me was going to Roswell, and her mom was at the point in her life where she was struggling just to live one more day. She was just trying to get through the night to wake up the next day. And I can remember walking in there and she opened her eyes and um, she looked at me and she said, how's your knee? And, I, and it crushed me, it crushed me. She's, she's struggling just to breathe and she's wondering how my knee is. And then once in a while she would get moved over to the pediatric wing in the, in the leukemia wing. And you see these little kids, you know, and they're playing and they're playing Nintendo and they have these masks on and they have to go through airlocks where it's super sterile because their immune system's wiped out. And here's me, you know, ugh, man, I'm hurting, I'm hurting so bad. And I started thinking, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm walking away from Roswell, the door slams behind me and I get to go home and no one else gets to go home in there. Well, I'm complaining about how bad my knee hurts. Someone just got their leg amputated. They'd love my knees, even if they're not working right. And I started finding gratitude and I started giving up that bitterness, that bitterness at like how bad I got it, how, how terrible my life is. And I started seeing things through a little bit of a different lens that, yeah, my legs hurt, but I got legs. And yeah, it sucks to get off the couch, but no one's helping me out of my hospital bed. You know, no one's taking me, to, no one's bringing me a bedpan. Like there was stuff, I still had a family, I still had a wife that loved me, I still had two kids. So I had good stuff, but I was so focused on all the crap that I was going through, I kind of forgot about that. We, long story short, um, my wife's mom passed away, and um, my father that they gave six months to, he made it six weeks and he passed away. He was my best friend in the whole world, and it was terrible, it was a terrible time in our life, and um, things kind of settled down for us a little bit, and, um, my wife used to put my socks and shoes. That's why I put these in here so I don't forget to tell people this. My, wa my wife used to put my socks and shoes on me before I'd come in here to teach. And I can remember after things settled down, I looked down at her and you could still see the pain, you know, in her eyes. And I knew that within a year, if I wasn't dead, that our marriage was going to look a lot different because somebody was going to have to take care of me. If I can't put my shoes on this year, what's next year going to be? And I feel like in a little bit of a way, I had stuff wrong with me and I had excuses, but in a little bit of that, some of that was my fault. I wasn't trying. I wasn't trying at all. 
You know, I, I just watched my mom and my dad struggle every day just to live, and I didn't have that. I didn't have that struggle. I didn't have that. So I said, I have to do something. Like, this isn't about me. This is about my wife losing another person that she loves. So what I did is I did some research, and I found out that you can get this bariatric surgery, like a gastro sle gastric sleeve or a lap band, and I thought that's going to be what I'm going to do. So I went and found out all the information. I got a packet of paper. I did the meetings. I was all set. And all I had to do was go to my primary doctor and have him sign off on it. And my wife and I went in there. We sat down with him, and he's like, no, you're too sick. First of all, I was on so much medicine. I was on this thing called fentanyl, and it's super, super, super crazy. It's stronger than morphine. And what they were worried about that the anesthesia wouldn't even work on me. They'd have to give me so much, they were worried about my heart stopping. My blood pressure was already 255 over 115. My numbers were off the charts. And then the other thing was, if I lost a lot of weight, they were worried I would get so weak I would never get out of a wheelchair. See, my doctor's job was to keep me out of a wheelchair for another 30 days. Thank you very much. Thank you. You didn't even, you can yell in 10 more minutes. So um, we walked out of there and I thought, this guy just killed me. He just literally signed my death warrant. I'm done. I'm dead. He killed me. And I thought, I'll, do, I'll just do one try and see if I can do this on my own without the surgery. Um, so I did what everyone does, right? I mean, this is what people do. We diet. We go on diets. And I started logging down my calories and watching what I ate. And I was still eating crappy food, but at least I was like looking at it. Um, I started getting rid of the red meat and bringing in the turkey and the chicken. I started getting rid of the cheddar cheese and I'd bring in mozzarella, like a lower fat. And I did start adding some fruits and veggies in. Instead of getting two biscuits from um, Burger King, I, I would get like one and eat a couple bananas. You know, I was trying to make some kind of changes that I knew, but I didn't know much about this stuff. And then I started moving. I figured if I can, if I can get to my truck, yeah, I'm out of breath when I get in there, but Maybe I could do it twice, and maybe I could walk to the driveway, you know, things like this. But those little changes at 400 pounds and probably eight to 10,000 calorie intake a day, those little changes, I started losing weight. But I wasn't really feeling better. Um, so one day I'm sitting on the couch, like I did a lot, and this movie came up in my queue that was called Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. And it's about this guy from Australia he comes over to the U.S. and he takes fresh fruits and veggies, he puts them in a juicer and he drinks this juice and that's all he does for 60 days. Well, what happened over the course of this film, he lost 60 pounds, he got off almost all his medicines and he had a really rare condition that was supposed to be incurable that he got rid of. Well, by the time the credits rolled, I already ordered a juicer because that's what I wanted to do. And I started juicing and it was fantastic. Six days into it, I felt like a different person. I started sleeping through the night. I hadn't done that in years. I started having more energy. I started hurting less. I started to want to do stuff. But at the same time, I knew that I couldn't juice the rest of my life. That's just not sustainable. You can't live on vegetable juice and no solid food the rest of your life. But because I watched Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, all these other movies came up in my queue. And I think you guys just watched Fed Up. The one that really did it for me was Forks Over Knives. I watched that movie, and I've never done this in my life. I got to the end of that movie, and I started it over again. My mind was blown that you could actually live without meat and dairy and processed food. It didn't make sense to me. I never heard this before. <coughs> I started eating better foods, and the better food that I ate, the more results I got, and the more results I got, the more I wanted to get better at this thing. So I started eating good food, and then instead of sitting on the couch while my kids went to practice, we started going outside, and I started walking, and I started hiking. But that's not yet. But this is what I was. This is me. This is what I was. Crutches, immobilizers, all this nonsense. And once I started making the change, things started unsnowballing as fast as they snowballed. This was the first walk, this is probably the most memorable walk I've ever taken. This was my first walk where I moved on purpose. Me and my wife set out, I made it 0.74 miles. And I conked out and she had to come get me. 
and that took almost an hour to go 0.74 miles. I was super proud of myself, but when I came home, I had to pack my legs in ice. I got a whole bunch of medicine out. Um, I was hurting, but I went back and I did it again. And the thing is, I love the outdoors, so I started walking outside. I started finding places around here. I lived here for 40 years. I never knew places like this existed. Little Rock Park City, you know, Ellicottville. We started exploring everywhere. Some things in our backyard, even some things in Williamsville. This is Glen Falls, I had never been there. Me and my daughter went for a walk there and I walked with my son at Letchworth in the winter. Super, super cool stuff. Once I was walking outside, um, I had a friend about a year before, um, he had went to the Adirondack Mountains and he climbed a high peak and I thought that was the coolest thing and I sat in that plastic chair, 400 pounds, and I said, I want to climb a mountain and like people are like, yeah, okay, <laughs> climb a mountain and I said, I want to do it in one year. Well, as I started walking, I started purposely finding hills to walk and Little less than one year later, on July 6, 2012, I summited Big Slide Mountain. It was one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. It took about nine hours of hammering up that mountain, and I made it to the top, and it felt so good. I really thought I was going to die a couple times, but we made it. I liked it so much that I went back and I told my family, you guys got to see this. So since then, Man, me and my family climbed up a couple of mountains, and then we did a couple high peaks together. And uh, I just started enjoying the outdoors. I started enjoying the Adirondacks, and, the, and the, the more fit I got, the more I was able to do. And sometimes I was doing three mountains in a day, which is insane. And then as I'm walking, I started feeling a little bit of extra energy. I got a little bounce in my step, and I'm like, I wonder if I could run. Like, I'm not supposed to walk. I wasn't supposed to be walking much less walking in the woods, much less climbing mountains. I wonder if I could jog. So I went out, uh, we saw this thing on TV, the Tough Mudder, and I said, we should sign up for that. So I got a few people crazy enough in my family to sign up for me. And once I signed up, I'm like, we gotta run. Like, we gotta learn how to run. So I started on this trail. And I'd run probably, honestly, probably from here to here, and I'd throw up, because I just wasn't used to it. But the next time I went back, I went a little bit farther than I did the day before. And before you knew it, in 2013, my family completed a Tough Mudder and it was the coolest thing ever because we did it together. Then I said, well, if we can run the Tough Mudder, let's try a 5K, that would be cool. And this was one of the coolest races I've ever done. Um, we set out on a mission to finish a 5K without walking at all. And we did, and it was amazing, and we did that together. And then we signed up for a 10K, and we did that. But this, who's, who's, you ready? Are you ready to hit me? Be ready. This race was probably one of the most memorable moments of my life. On the back of that handicap pass, which by the way is, was still valid at the time, I could have legally parked in a handicapped spot when I pulled in to run this half marathon. I had my mother-in-law's picture and my father and I had my family and then I had a picture of a friend that was struggling with uh, thyroid cancer who since passed away and I had taped them on there and I tied that thing around my waist. And I completed the half marathon with a valid handicap pass and that was super cool for me. Um, actually it was in the paper and Muskinis was there for that one. It was a super, super cool day, a day I'll never forget. I picked up a bike. I wanted to do a 100-mile bike race. Um, so I've done a couple centuries. I did a metric last month through the mountains. It was insane. Um, and my joints that were so weak that couldn't hold me up, um, I started deadlifting almost 500 pounds. And I couldn't pick up chalk. And this was super cool too. This was a cool day last year uh, in May. Um, I had an opportunity to finish the Buffalo Marathon. And I did it with a bunch of friends and I put Miss O'Royal right there because she'd be mad if I didn't. But it was great. It was a great experience and the newspaper was there and they made a big deal out of it and all that stuff. How are we doing on the 20? Um, a minute. 
A minute left is perfect. And so, yeah, so this is all super cool. And I got some medals and, and actually the state legislation actually shut down and they made a resolution to recognize my hard work and that was cool and I have a film company come out over the summer and they're making a film out of my story and you know we had drones chasing and all that stuff is cool it's all cool but it's, it's that's not really the point the point is the super cool thing is that this is a picture of me and my wife and I remember this day like yesterday we were at the Henry Ford Museum and I can remember getting up in the hotel room and I tried so hard to get my socks and shoes on and I couldn't do it. And I had to say, you help me out. She put my socks and shoes on, right? Check this out, check this out, this get ready, get ready. But here's the cool thing, something I always wanted to do. Mount Washington is the highest peak on the East Coast. And I said, you know what? I wanna climb that mountain. And my wife said, I think I can do it with you. So August, just a couple months ago, she went from putting my socks and shoes on and I got to put her backpack. And we made it up. We summited Mount Washington together. It was the coolest thing ever. That's the cool stuff. None of the other stuff matters. And now I get to go tell my story to other people, which is cool too. But here's the thing. You guys don't care about this, but my cholesterol right now is 117. And it was 300. My triglycerides are 259. And now they're 74. These are markers to see how healthy you are, which is really good. But who cares, right? Who cares? Like, no one in here is 400 pounds and crippled, right? Who cares? Here's the thing. It wasn't too long ago. And by the way, I got in a lot of trouble with this from my wife. So you guys better appreciate this. I went back into the Kaufman archives and I dug out some pictures of what I looked like in high school because I wasn't 400 pounds in high school. This is what I looked like. That's me. I was a norm, I had a cooler mullet than anyone in here, but I was a normal kid. Well, kind of normal, right? You know, I was just a normal kid. I wasn't, look at, look at that, look at that. You know you like that mullet. That's the best mullet ever. I was just, I was a kid just like you guys. You know, it's, it's, you, you're laughing because you're jealous of the mullet. I know that. I'm going to bring that back next year. There, look at that, look at that. See that? That highlights it real good. But I put these pictures in there so you guys understand that I was just a normal high school kid. I wasn't 400 pounds. But here's what you need to know. The choices that you make in high school, they follow you the rest of your life. You are free to choose whatever you want in the school well, you're young, but you're not free from the consequences that it's going to happen later on in life. So here's the thing. If I could walk in here and say, I want everyone in here to not eat meat, not eat dairy, don't do any processed food and eliminate all oils from your diet, you guys could all shake your head and I could go home. But I know you're not going to do that because there's McDonald's down the road. There's bocce's. You got Mighty Taco, right? All these things that you think are food that aren't really food. It's true. But here's the problem. Oh, wait, we'll get to that in a minute. Here's another thing that you should worry about. So who cares? You ask me who cares, I'm telling you why. Right now in the U.S., 30% of all Americans are at a healthy weight. 30%. That's crazy. The other 60 are overweight, and out of those 60, 30% are morbidly obese, which means they, it could be life-threatening, their weight. That's insane. Here's another thing. We spend $300 billion a year on this obesity thing. Heart disease, stroke, cancer, lung disease, these are all things that obesity puts at a higher risk. Over 70 or almost 70 percent of Americans are on some kind of prescription drug, and out of those 70 percent, 50 percent of those are on two or more. That's insane. We're getting heavier. I'll say it. We're getting fatter, sicker, and more unhealthy every single year. But we keep dumping more money and more technology. And here's the thing: How come? How come? Why is this happening? Why? I think personally, I don't have any education on this, but I think what's happening
as we keep looking for the cure. Everybody wants to find a cure, but no one wants to find the cause. So instead of asking what the cure is, let's find out what the cause is. And here's the thing. I usually spend a lot of time on this slide, and I'm not going to today. I'm just going to pick out one thing. Anybody have a bird feeder? Bird feeder. You got a bird feeder? Yeah. How much food do you, do you measure the food to put in there? No. You don't measure it. I just estimate it. Do you just dump it in? You just fill it? Yeah. Do you, you only fill it certain days? When it, you just keep it full? Yeah. Right? So you don't want the birds to starve. So the birds can eat all the food that they want, right? They can eat all day, right? Yep. So do you have a lot of fat birds that are like laying in your backyard? Because they're eating all day. They eat as much as they want. No? Do you have any birds that are on those scooters? No? no? None. Any hunters in here? Jason, you ever climb out of your stand and see a huge deer? With a muffin top? <laughs> no? Anybody fish? You, you ever see a largemouth bass with cankles? Nope. No? Double chin? No. Because here's the thing. Those, and I live in Alden. There's so many cornfields, it's crazy, right? We have deer running all over the place. There's unlimited amount of corn. But there's never fat deer. There's never crippled deer. There's never sick deer to a point. Because they eat the food that was designed for them. And when you mess with that, that's when you have problems. You have fat dogs because you screw with their diet. But a dog in the wild is not going to get fat. Fat birds. Yeah, I'm not going to touch the other things, but I could. Okay, so here's the problem. We know what foods, you guys have been hearing this since you were little, eat your veggies, like you know that, you already know that. But the problem is, society has ingrained in our head, well, we're already at 20 minutes, I gotta hurry. This stuff, that milk, it does the body good, right? I'm not even gonna get into the fact that that's the weirdest thing ever, that we're a species that drinks another species milk, and we're the only species that drinks milk as adults, like that's just all weird, but I'm not gonna go there with that. But look at this. Who, any runners in here? Runners? You, man, you're everything. You're, you're the best assistant ever. So what, do you run cross country? I run 5K. A 5K. So you run a 5K, right? You're tearing, you know, you're getting that last kick in before the finish line, right? You cross the finish line and I hand you a chocolate milk. You gonna drink that? Yeah. You are. It's, it's too as soon as it will end up on my shoes if I drink it, it will. Like I want water. It's the same with football players. You guys see this Gatorade stuff? They're not drinking Gatorade, they're drinking water. But we see this, this is like the magic potion, you know, it's a magic potion. Same with meat. Oh, oh, by the way, first of all, you guys know how they do laboratory testing on like rats and that? You know how they give them cancer? With something called casing. Casing is the most cancer promoter ever discovered. Guess what it is? Milk protein. When you got whey protein, that's what it is, right? But no one will tell you that. Here's another thing. You need meat to get big and strong, right? We need protein. It's all over. It's all over the place. But what you don't understand, because people don't talk about this, that just a half a serving of red meat, you have a 48% higher chance to get type 2 diabetes. But everyone associates sugar with diabetes, not meat. But no one's going to talk about that because the wonderful beef industry. I even found an advertisement for hot dogs. You know how I started this presentation out? I told you, let your food be your medicine. They use that to tell you how, how healthy hot dogs are. Look at all this stuff. 30% B12, look at it, it's so good for you. It's a health food. Here's my problem with, uh, what time do we get out of here? I'm sorry. Okay, here's the thing. When I first heard about plant-based diet, I knew nothing about it. And I'm kind of glad that I didn't get stereotypical thinking going. But here's the thing. Most people see a plant-based eater or a vegan as this guy. That's what they see. It's true. And they think that they eat this stuff, right? Munching on spinach or licking the bottom of a lawnmower. But here's the truth. Some of the best, most elite athletes in the world are plant-based, or you could call them vegan. Okay? Some of the fastest runners, best fighters, 
biggest bodybuilders, and Germany's strongest man, Patrick Bobumian, hasn't eaten meat or dairy in over 15 years. The dude has a 1,300 pound yoke carry. Like he picks 1,300 pounds and he walks across stage with it. He is an animal, pun intended. The other thing is the food. Everyone thinks that plant-based people just eat salads. This is my food. I gotta go fast. There's about 30 slides in here and I'm starving. But this is the food that I eat. I take pictures of this every night. None of this food has meat, dairy, oil, nothing processed. I make everything at home. It's all just plants from Niagara Produce. This is where I get this stuff from. This is it. Does that look like salad? Does that look gross? This is good food. I'm starving looking at this. This is good food. But here's the thing. None of that stuff matters. Because remember I told you there's three things that you need to walk away from. I've never done this before on any of my talks, but I'm going to do it today. And this is why you guys are here. First of all, I think goals are so important. The society that we live in, we use technology and money to make life easier, right? It makes That's what we do. Technology makes your life easier. The problem is you get your life so easy that you don't struggle and you try to accomplish everything the easiest way out. So my advice, set some goals and chase them with everything. You'll feel better about yourself and you won't have to count on other people for your, self or for your esteem. The other thing, this is huge, and I don't really talk to people about this much because this is something I have in my closet that I don't want anymore. Um, addiction is a terrible thing. You know, food was a big addiction for me, but I had many addictions. And I can tell you this, they don't start off with no one, no one, there is no one in the world that starts off and says, I want to be a, a, a crackhead living on the streets. No one does that. It doesn't start off like that. It's a trap. And the thing is, sometimes you feel like you need to escape because life is so bad. And you take that one thing to make you escape. It doesn't matter if it's food. It doesn't matter if it's drugs. It doesn't matter if it's alcohol. It doesn't really matter what it is. But that one thing that you're counting on to escape and it turns into a trap because the very thing that you're using to try to escape, you can't escape from once it goes too far. So my advice, if you feel like you need to escape life, go talk to somebody. You guys are so lucky. You guys are in such an awesome district that you can go talk to anybody. Talk to a friend's parent. If you can't talk to your own parent, just talk to somebody if you feel that need to escape. The other thing, and this is huge too, um, there's always hope. No matter where you are in life, no matter where you think you are, there's always hope. And here's the thing. I don't think I was suicidal so much, but there were many nights I'd go to bed and I didn't care if I woke up in the morning. I, I had two kids, a wife, a job, I'm a teacher, and there were nights I went to bed and I'm like, I don't know if I'm getting up in the morning. And I, honestly, I don't know if I cared. But if I would have made a stupid decision I would have never been able to have this, this is, this week, this weekend, me and my wife just, she did her first half marathon. I'm happy, you know, and, and at this point, I really didn't feel there was any hope in my life. I thought I'd be dead. So don't give up. Don't give, there's always hope, no matter what kind of hope, what kind of a mess you think you have yourself into, there's always hope. Okay. The last thing I'm going to say, and the text is messed up, I'm sorry, so you have to trust me what it says. You know, every single person in here is an intricate piece of this world. And every single one, that says, that says we all matter. Believe me, it does. It's weird. There's a rake and stuff in there. But we all matter. Every single person in here matters in this world. We're all a piece of the puzzle. Okay, I think I did it. I think I did it. Any questions? No, I did that good that no one has questions? At least, yeah. No. I challenged myself, and I changed for my family. See, addicts, people that are addicted to stuff, it's very selfish. It always starts with, I need this. So when I shifted my focus to my wife needs me because she just lost her mom, it, it became more about her than me, you know? But you know what, my family, no matter what they would have said to me, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done it. 
I wouldn't have changed until I was ready, you know? Pearls, do you have a question or no? Sorry. Positive, hot peppers, nothing. Any other questions? That's it. All right, we did it. Thanks for listening.